the Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers are the first carriers to incorporate a twin-island design, which separates the running of the ship from the flying operations resulting in greater visibility of operations and increases survivability. The reason for two islands is, simply put, due to the gas turbine exhausts. The design would have either had two small islands or one large long island. The two smaller islands were chosen. The location and alignment of the islands are based around the 2.4-meter diameter gas turbine exhausts which were pre-fitted in the island and below in the ship superstructure. In a post on their website, the aircraft carrier alliance the group responsible for building the ship have detailed the reason for two islands further. There are live communication links between the two islands, however to allow them to work together. The advantages of the unique design include the more efficient use of space across the flight deck, hangar and lifts, as well as the reduction in air turbulence over the flight deck. The twin island design also reflects design improvements further below deck, including the decision to separate power generation machinery in order to increase survivability. There are two sets of power propulsion systems a gas turbine and two diesel engines, located in different areas of the ship separated by watertight doors. This means there are also two exhaust stacks, one forward and one aft, which are masked within the twin islands. Survivability is increased further by the islands, being designed with the capability to assume each other's role in an emergency. Forward Island Ship control The forward island has a good view of the ship's bow and is home to the navigation bridge from where the ship is controlled. The island is also home to the commanding officer's day cabin, chart room, navigator's cabin, observation deck, bridge mess and around 100 vital mission systems compartments. The Florida sailing windows of the main bridge are up to 2 meters high, providing an exceptional level of visibility, yet designed to withstand a significant impact. The long-range radar and other sensors are installed on top of the 680-ton structure. Aft Island, Flyco Flying Control The aft island serves as the carrier's equivalent of an airport control tower, effectively directing flight deck operations on the ship. The innovative Flyco position provides operators with an unparalleled operational working space with 3-meter tall specially glazed panels, giving more than 290 degrees of view over the flight deck. Like the forward island's windows, these are designed to withstand a significant impact. The Flyco is also closely linked to the ship's operations room, navigation bridge, flight deck and hangar operations center. Lifting the islands as each of the islands were built in different parts of the country, transporting them for final assembly was an engineering challenge in itself. The islands had to pass a Ministry of Defense audit on all compartments and a full care and protection inspection to ensure the blocks were weatherproof and able to undertake the sea journey to Rosyth. Additionally, a transportation team spent around four days ensuring the structures were fully secured to the barge before setting sail for the east coast of Scotland. The islands were lifted into position on the flight deck by the massive Goliath crane, with special lifting frames attached for the purpose. After attaching the crane to the lifting frame, the predicted center of gravity had to be confirmed by applying a small amount of lift. After some adjustments, the crane was able to take the full weight of the islands, lifting them over the carrier's flight deck and locating them in their final position. They were then welded onto the ship's hull. Although far from the heaviest lift of the project, the geometry and shape of the islands presented significant challenges. The alignment of the gas turbine exhausts was particularly challenging as they were pre-fitted into the islands and below into the ship's superstructure. The placements of the islands were significant and a highly visible achievement in the assembly program of both HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales as the ship's iconic design took shape for the first time.